Hello, I'm Gemma Forte and welcome to this Q&A on digestive health. Bloating and trapped wind along with indigestion and heartburn are common digestive problems and today we'll be offering some practical tips and advice for those that may be suffering. What are the symptoms and what are the aggravators? How important are diet and lifestyle choices? Well, I'm delighted to be joined today by Dr. Pixie McKenna, who will hopefully be answering these questions and more. Welcome, Pixie. Thank you for having me, Gemma. It's very nice to see you. Now, how common would you say these kind of problems are amongst people? You know, the bloating and the trapped wind. Incredibly common. About 68% of people report bloating and trapped wind. It's an incredibly common problem, but unfortunately only one in three of us will actually seek medical advice about it. We oh. just suffer in silence. Yes, and so what are the, the symptoms associated with these kinds of issues? Well obviously that feeling that you're bloated, you're distended, you, um, you don't feel like eating, the, the wind is all trapped so it's uncomfortable, you know even your clothes mm. are tight. It can make you feel quite irritable and, and just, it's just uneasy, it's just not a pleasant feeling. You can get that acid taste in your mouth, so it's quite, it's quite a horrid thing. Absolutely, and what you've just described, as you say, we've all felt that from time yeah. to time, but to have that as an ongoing problem would be awful actually, really, you know, uncomfortable. So let's have a look at what are the main culprits um, so that we can maybe get one or two tips on exactly. what to avoid. I know we've got some things here, haven't we? And some things that I wouldn't expect. As well. well, I mean, it's obvious, look, most people know if you're going to go out and have a curry, you're probably going to get indigestion and trapped wind if you're prone to it. So the spicy foods, you've got your, some chilies there, mm. got some chocolate there was an yeah, interesting one. I would not have expected mm. that at all actually. And chewing gum as well, I was yes. quite mystified as to why that would cause it. Chewing gum, because we tend to chew and take in a lot of air when we chew, okay. and along with chewing gum, chewing the tops of your pen, so sucking in the air as you chew the pen top, right. or having a cigarette. So okay. it's an interesting one. And you've got the potato here as well. Yes. The poor little potato can very often cause bloating and trapped wind. And you've got some yogurt there. Yes. So there's quite a lot of food groups, yeah. plus the citrus fruits, which, you know, we'd expect well, you, you, yeah, you're totally us. sort of um, led to believe fruit's just healthy, yeah. that's fine. But that's interesting that the citrus ones mm. can cause, can those, cause problems. those problems as well. So okay. there's a lot to be on the alert for. Yes. Now, is there anything else other than foods that can cause these problems as well? Well, ladies are particularly bothered by this because, you know, it's quite common now to try and wear a pair of comfort on, you know, the comfort pants to, to pull you all in. Pants. Those yes, ones, I've come yes. Across yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And um, they can be really problematic right. and can increase the symptoms of bloating and distension. Yeah. So they're a bit of a problem. Mm. Uh, smoking, as I mentioned, which is something that you wouldn't necessarily correlate. Mm. And bizarrely, people who wear dentures that don't fit properly really? can also be impacted. Okay. So yeah, there's quite a quite a lot of uh, strange correlations. Yeah, very interesting. Certainly one or two things you wouldn't think about mm. at all. So if people are suffering from this, what treatments would you recommend? I think if you are suffering, don't do what one third of people do, which is sit at home and suffer in silence. Yeah. Go and see your pharmacist. They're ideally placed to advise you on treatment so that you can get rid of your symptoms. Now, in addition to that, you've got to do a bit of work yourself. Mm -hmm. Ideally, do a food diary. That will tell you which foods are causing the most mischief inside in your gut. Okay. But equally so, there are things you can do for yourself. When you eat, eat slowly. Don't try and chow everything down in mm. one hit. Don't eat late at night. Try not to drink a lot of fizzy drinks with your, your, um, your meals. And obviously, avoid the very common triggers, which would be spicy food, caffeine, alcohol, mm. that type of thing. So there are lots of things that you can do. And if you're sitting at home, uh, you might be sitting at home watching this and thinking, I've got it right now. Mm. Go and have a peppermint tea. That works quite well. Yeah, now that's something that my uh, stepmom always has after a meal, and that's great, isn't it? Just mm. for sort of settling your tummy sometimes. Yes. Um, so, very, very interesting. Now, as you say, we do all suffer from this from time to time. Christmas Day, I think the whole nation does, yes. from overeating and stuff. But who should be seeking help? You know, who are the people who, you know, might be suffering from this too often? And what symptoms might they be displaying? I think, first of all, if you've got symptoms of bloating and trapped wind, 
you seek the advice of your pharmacist and you modify your lifestyle and the mm. symptoms are persistent and they're impacting your life, you've got to see your doctor. Yeah. The other red flag signs, so things that would like flag up to us, oh, there's something going on, would be things like weight loss mm -hmm. or really bad discomfort um, around your breastbone or going right up to your throat, which would yeah. suggest an awful lot of acid. So potentially you might have something like an ulcer um, of really, really persistent bloating in your abdomen because that might suggest that actually there's something going on that has got nothing to do with your gut right. that might be related to something else. Yeah. So weight loss would be another symptom. So really, if things, I think, if you've done your home remedies, in terms of modifying your lifestyle, you've taken your pharmacist's advice and things are hanging about mm. and not getting any better. Get in to see that doctor. Yeah. And no point being embarrassed, is there awkward? It's much better to just go and get it sorted out. We talk about this thing all day long. That's exactly. our job. Exactly. Well, we've run out of time, sadly, but thank you so much to Dr. Pixie McKenna for joining us. Thank you very much thank indeed. You, and thank you for watching. Goodbye.